Hello, today we'll be looking at what's in this rather unexciting cardboard box, but just before we get into it, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon to find out when I'm uploading stuff. So, what's in the box? If you've seen videos before, this is very typical of Full Speed RC, quite plain boxes, uh, exciting stuff inside, so let's open it and take a look. We have in here this guy, which you can't really see. This is the Full Speed Toothpick Pro. Not to be confused with the original toothpick, which I have here for comparison's sake. What you get in here is two sets of 2535 props, four bladed, quite different to the little 65mm props in this one. Battery strap, another battery strap, some, um, don't know what that is. Feels like a kind of rough material pass, don't know. This bit of self adhesive, which looks like it's for the battery to create some friction on. And then the little quad itself. Now, in defining what a toothpick is, uh, I mean, it was obviously coined by uh, Kebab FPV as he's a dentist and he likes putting dental names into things. But it's become kind of a class now. It kind of means something very light, very thin. And uh, I almost think it has to use these little tiddly 65mm props. And it, it's kind of a question of can this be called a toothpick? Or is this more just like a micro quad? About two years ago, the sort of 100mm... 2S micro quads were coming out and no one called them toothpicks then. Um, so, you know, call it what you like. I, I would call this a micro. It's got the same styling as this one, but if you pick them both up, you can instantly tell the difference. And you can you can probably see it just in the camera here. I'll get some close-ups, but this frame, I think this was a one and a half mil. It flexes. This is two and a half mil. It's much thicker. It's much more robust feeling. It feels like a little tank. It has, once again, the little D8 compatible receiver that Full Speed RC do themselves. Um, I swapped that out on the previous one with an XM Plus because I wasn't getting much range out of it. But uh, we'll see what we get there. But there are a few little differences um, around. You notice we've got a capacitor straight going into the uh, XT30 connector. There's uh, a few things I really liked in the design that have changed as well. You notice on the original toothpick we've got these little plugs here where the motors go in. We've now got these directly soldered and going inward so there's nothing sticking out to get caught. But a lot of the things are the same. It's got the same EOS 2 uh, Calyx camera which is quite common in all these little quads. They've upped the flight controller slightly. This was the 411, they called it. This is the 412, still an F4 based board. Obviously the motors are quite different. These use tiny 1103 at 8000 kVs. These are monsters in comparison, 1106, 4500 kVs. So the big basis of this one is it's designed to run on a 4S battery. This used 3S and some people would argue that 3S too much for it because these little props tended to flutter and wobble like crazy. I actually thought it was crazy fun on 3S. I, I enjoyed the fact it was mental and it would it's basically flying something that felt like it was going to break apart but somehow kept together, which I liked. Very different kettle of fish this one. It's um, it's much more solid. It, it really looks like it can build to handle it and certainly those props are much uh, better designed. Obviously these things would just flex and they'll probably blow apart at that sort of RPM whereas these ones look pretty good. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's, um, let's see what we need to do in beta flight. We'll uh, bind it up. We'll put the props on and um, work out how to get the battery strap in. It wasn't, it wasn't a great situation last time. It sort of had to go inside of the battery flat. And what we really need is something good to fix the battery again to stop it moving. So, yeah, let's get on with that and see what we get. Okay, so a quick dive into beta flight. And I really didn't have to do much there. It was all set up reasonably well. Uh, Ports-wise, you haven't got anything free there. You've already got one set up on SBUS and the other one runs IRC Tramp for the VTX. Config wise, I've had a motor stop, it's running DSHOT 600. Note that the props are reversed, or it's props out, uh, which is quite handy to know before you put the props on, obviously. Uh, we've got an 8K, 8K loop there, uh, changed the Curry K craft name. Um, it already had set up the arming angle of 180 degrees, which I like. Um, OSD, anti gravity, and dynamic filter were set on, and RX set was set on which is all good I've played with the battery a little bit I've upped the max cell voltage work for using high voltage batteries and I've pushed the warning cell down a little bit because these little batteries do tend to sag quite a lot although I think of the smallest forest I've got is a 450 so it's not that small 
speed wise I've gone and changed it so I've got a super 8 of uh, 0.8 and max velocity of a thousand degrees I saved the original rate profile as rate profile 2 because I found it quite bizarre uh, and it makes me want to fly with it and see what happens um, the max velocity is fine the super 8 is fine but the RC rate has got some interesting bits there with a, a 1.2 in the roll pitch and a 2.0 on the yaw that might be interesting to fly with see what it's like I've never I always just sort of think about what the final max velocity is instead of the RC rate and I generally like the the normal super 8 curve but yeah we'll see so on the receiver I have got it plugged in it's quite interesting because it's a D8 which should mean 8 channel but we've got the RSSI signal there on aux 5 and it was already set up and that is of course channel 9 so it's like eight channels um, except there's an extra one for RSSI which is quite handy um, everything else looks good there the modes they just had basically um, arm and uh, a couple of other setup I've just put my normal ones in there I can't think anybody's gonna come up with the mode selection that I already use because you know it's it's quite personal so I'd always expect to change that OSD as well quite sensible just some minimal information down the bottom and some warnings I've upped that with all my normal stuff one word of warning actually here is even when you plug it into USB it actually does run the VTX so one thing I did is go and put it into pit mode just so we don't have any overheats there you'll see as well this is on uh, 402 so it's like a proper version of uh, beta flight 4 and uh, so you can use the up-to-date beta flight configurator all good and that's about it nothing nothing much to do there so I'll, I'll get this quad ready to fly and uh, go from there so just on the setup here I'm still not completely happy with the battery strap this is the larger battery strap which you will need to take any sort of force cell this little one is is barely going to go around there because as you see what it does it it tucks in and through because there's not enough space to put it behind there and that makes it tricky because you haven't got much of a good basis here for getting the battery tight so we've got these little bits of the foam that was in the box for keeping that a bit tighter and the, the bigger battery strap which is quite a bit bigger and I might cut a bit of it down but at least it holds things in tightly the other thing to note I didn't know what these were uh, and I had to ask this is self adhesive stuff and it's for going around the arms to keep the wires in place uh, and looks quite neat but the the wires on the arms aren't going anywhere so I'm not I'm not bothered about this for today well here we are with the toothpick pro the least toothpick looking thing I've ever seen but certainly exciting to fly and you can see that 4s 450 battery looks pretty big in comparison with the quad um, should it survive the two 454s I've got I've also got a 300 milliamp 3s just to see if it how it flies with 3s it seems like the motor kv is a bit slow for 3s but we will see anyway let's um yeah let's scarily enough get this in the air in this quite tight narrow corridor um yes I'm not sure what to expect let's find out so i hadn't actually even hovered this inside or anything so i thought I'd just give it a very quick line of sight check just to make sure it would hover and everything was okay and that was fine what i noted already is that it needs very little throttle to get in the air take a quick look at this because what i did i thought i set it to 200 milliwatts but if you look up the top you will see it stays there at 25 milliwatts and unbeknownst to me at the time I had neglected to unlock this I thought the lock was just on certain channels but it was also on power so all the time I thought I was flying on 200 milliwatts I was actually flying on 25 so I won't dwell too much on that because what I, what I came off feeling is like oh that VTX wasn't so good and of course that that was my fault for not unlocking it properly but in this first battery I just had a bit of a fly around just did these basic maneuvers played around the trees as per normal and you can see that good old Caddox is, is putting out that sort of red quality on the grass as per normal the RSSI value was going crazy so what I thought I'd do on the second battery is just push it and see how far it would go I only want to go to the end of the strip see if it will go that far so off we go on the second battery and you can see there just how little throttle it actually needs to get flying most of the time we are around sort of 15 percent which is absolutely nothing of course all the way down here the radio is shouting at me that telemetry is bad telemetry is critical and we sort of somewhere down in the 20s but again we've got absolutely no problems the signal holds up it just feels like it's really bad I mean it's almost a case of uh, may as well not have an RSSI value there because it bounces around quite so much 
it's it's kind of a case that you should fly the field gently to the extent of where you'd want to go and if that's okay you can just sort of let loose and ignore it for the rest of the time now i also went back and i did a quick test on a free s battery and this is one of the little high voltage 300 milliamp hour free s's that i'd normally use with the the other toothpick style quads or some of the silly whoop type things so generally quite a high C battery, but of course the KV on these motors aren't quite as high. So we're having to use a lot more power to, to do what we want to. Again, this flies absolutely fine on a 3S. It just, it's not particularly exciting because I can't get that sort of crazy speed and crazy power that, that, uh, that I want. I think even, even more so on this type of quad because the, the KV of the motors is really designed to be more of a 4S flyer but you know it's okay you can do it if you want to uh, and if you're you know you're not wanting quite the craziness of the 4S battery or you just haven't got many 4S batteries like me I've only got a couple of uh, 450s then it's you know it's perfectly okay just for flying around casually and having a bit of fun anyway I'm not dwelling on this bit because as soon as I realized I'd messed up that VTX power I thought I'd better go out and do some more testing hello back again with the little uh, full speed RC toothpick pro why because we cocked up the power on the VTX and the 25 milliwatts wasn't happening very nicely so we've properly upped it to 200 now and we're in this location which is a bit more open let's just do a bit more stuff but you know there's trees to mess around and we should see if we get some breakup or the picture is much improved then there's less breakup let's find out Look at that, red grass. Of course it's not red at all, it's completely green. But the uh, that Caddx micro camera is crazy. So I just wanted to check here to make sure that it actually said 200 there. So I knew I was on the right power this time. So I'm a lot happier with that one. And again, I came up and I did two batteries through this. Now, one thing I will say uh, about the Toothpick Pro is that compared to a regular toothpick it feels really really smooth and that doesn't really come across in this DVR recording and that might be because the DVR only records at a certain frame rate and what I'm seeing in the goggles is slightly different but certainly the feeling of the smoothness is very much there even if it doesn't reflect so on the DVR I've kind of been having a bit of a look and looking at what we get there it's i think it's less wobbles and perhaps more jello or rolling shutter and i'm wondering you know could a certain amount of this be fixed by using a micro ccd camera instead of the the micro cmos that we've actually got in because as it flies along it certainly feels very smooth it certainly sounds very smooth uh it's not super light so it's obviously going to be jigged about by the wind a little bit but that said, the actual feeling of this quad when you go off the power and sort of hang in the air there is it's it's pretty heavy for the size. It's quite solid. And so it's not as floaty as a lot of quads. When I go up here and I do a turn, it comes down actually pretty quickly. Certainly a positive about this quad is it's it feels a lot faster than the other toothpicks I've flown. When going out to sort of a big open field, using a any sort of micro quad sometimes feels a bit sluggish like you know you need to be down amongst proximity of trees now to feel any sense of speed in this one while it's certainly not fast like a 5s or even the 3s it feels pleasantly fast enough that having a big open space doesn't feel like a waste of time you're not thinking am i ever going to reach the other side here you're just it, it just gets there pretty quickly as far as the flying goes the handling's really quite nice the the only thing to mention is as i said before it feels heavier than you might imagine when you're doing no throttle maneuvers it actually drops down quite quickly one thing i forgot to do because i was flying around having a good time was to try that original set of rates that it came with it i was just flying with my normal rates uh but I, I'm sure it's probably okay. But again, rates are so personal that you will probably only like your, your own normal rate as well. But as per normal, I did a couple of speed runs and it did feel at some point somebody was trying to shoot us out of the air. As far as the VTX goes, it's a lot better on 200 milliwatts. I've heard before from people that have testers that can test the power of the output on these types 
of VTXs that the 25 milliwatts is not putting out anywhere near 25 milliwatts and the 200 doesn't put anywhere like 200. This will go up higher, uh, up to 600 at, at that point. I think it's, it was measured at putting out 500 and something. I, I should say this is in previous VTXs from Full Speed RC, not necessarily this one. But it's much improved. There's still a bit of noise on the screen. It's not something I really pick up on the goggles. But the main thing is we're not getting break up when we're, we're essentially going in a straight line line of sight, which we were before. It's, it's fairly good on that point of view. So yeah, a great time flying this thing. Pleasantly fast, whilst keeping that nice small micro size. You know, I, I still would argue about what uh, a toothpick was and what this was. I'd just call it a micro quad. But really nice to fly and yeah, fun. Is it a toothpick? Is it a micro quad? Don't care. It's fun to fly and it's nice and quick and you can do lots of stuff with it. So my answer to do you need a 4S on this size quad is you don't need it, but it's good fun if you have it and it enables us to use these better, bigger props, which are a little bit more smoother. The only thing I don't like about it is this, the, the way the battery strap works. Because it threads into the frame, it, there's not enough to really hold the battery against tight. Um, I'd prefer something which has got a proper buckle that you can really get tight. That is, uh, that's it really, that's just a minor niggle. Uh, the rest of it is, is all quite nice. You just have to remember to unlock it because at 25 milliwatts, I don't know what it's putting out, but it didn't feel like it measured up to any other 25 milliwatt VTX I've had before. I suspect it's not putting out enough and you need to ramp up the power. Other than that, it's a good fun fly. I really enjoyed it. Lots of fun to be had in small spaces and it will do an impressive amount of speed. And so even a big field, you're not gonna feel like you're sort of being a slug getting along to the end of it. I did not like the RSSI in this receiver, but I have to admit that the receiver actually held up okay over you know a couple of hundred meters so that's actually not so bad i just wish it would give a more sort of consistent signal about where it was anyway i like it we'll be flying it some more thinking about maybe trying to change the camera out if i can get something ccd in there i wonder if it would fix the little sort of jiggles and, and wobbles we've got there or if it's down to the fact that this thing is small and a bit jiggly anyway anyway this has been the full speed rc Toothpick Pro Quad, and it was supplied for review by Full Speed RC, so thanks very much to them. You will find links below where you can get this and check it out in more detail. I hope this has been a helpful review, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.